Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my annual favorites. This is Best of Beauty 2022. I went through all of my purchases and PR and picked out only the most noteworthy things. Without any Chanel, since I already posted my best and worst of Chanel 2022 video, I will link it down below just in case you missed it, but this is everything else. And just to give a little context, I did spend most of the year on either a low buy or a no buy, which is a trend I plan to continue into 2023 and beyond. So I didn't purchase nearly as much makeup this year as I have in the past few recent years. I think that's a good thing. I still ended up with some incredible products that I'm really happy I added to my huge makeup collection, which really doesn't need anything else. So the fact that I still really love these items, I think means they are really special. Coincidentally, I think I have 22 pieces here. So I'm calling this the top 22 of 2022. The majority of my favorites this year are complexion products because there were so many new launches and I think the quality was just really great this year and even on a low buy or a no buy I'm always curious to test a new foundation or a concealer because those are products that I tend to use up so I purchased quite a few of them I love the new super goop this launched earlier this year it's the golden hour shade as SPF 40, it is much deeper than the original, which they're now, now calling Sunrise. It's the same incredible formula. It's not sticky. It doesn't smell funny. It looks beautiful beneath foundation, and it works as the perfect illuminating primer because it is going to help grip your foundation, fill in fine lines and pores, kind of smooth the canvas, but then you get glow, you get a boost of color, this very beautiful bronze goddess look, and you get your SPF 40. This is amazing for anybody with medium to deep skin. That way you don't have a pearly kind of gray cast left on the skin. But even for somebody as light as I am, especially if I've sunless tanned my body and I never sunless tan my face, if I go in with the golden hour beneath my foundation, everything looks so much more even. My face matches my body so much better. It's a subtle difference, but it is definitely there. Another one of my favorite illuminating primers that launched this year is is the iconic London Underglow Blurring Primer. I love this so much because it's very thin. I'm wearing this today. It's very lightweight. It adds glow, but also kind of a soft focus finish to the skin. So it even looks beautiful on its own. If you're doing a no makeup makeup day, you could just mix this into your moisturizer or just layer a little bit of this on top of your moisturizer and get out the door. But beneath foundation, it's amazing because it's going to help grip it fills in the fine lines and pores so everything looks smoother on top, but it adds a little bit of that sheen. It gives life back to a matte foundation. So I like to use this with either the new Hourglass, the Charlotte Tilbury, any of my matte full coverage longwear foundations, the Ultra Latint from Chanel, this looks beautiful. It's more of a soft focus filter, a controlled glow. It's not too much, it's not too heavy, not greasy, and it doesn't add weight to the skin because it's so thin. Moving on to foundations, my number one favorite of the year will come as no surprise to you. It's the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation from Hourglass. I'm almost done with this bottle. I think I have this, this much left. I imagine I might finish this before the end of the year. Maybe the 31st, but I could finish this before the end of the year. It's so pretty. This has become my holy grail top drawer foundation. This is my preferred foundation for days that I'm filming, on days that I'm taking pictures, if I have an event, if I'm going out to meet friends, or maybe going out on a date. This will be my weekend, evening, special occasion foundation. I think it's probably a bit much for most people on a daily basis. You don't really need to do a full face of makeup every day. I do whenever I'm filming, but that would be my only excuse. If I was just running errands or hanging out working from home, I wouldn't choose this. It brings me so much joy and happiness to add products to my empties bin, especially if it's something that I purchased myself because I feel like I got my money's worth. So as much as I love the Hourglass Foundation, I will be so happy when I finally get rid of it. And it is going to happen soon, but today I forced myself to use another favorite. This is the new NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I have the shade Santa Fe. I actually think I have a couple other shades in my drawers. I was able to make I think three shades work on my skin. Another incredible foundation. It says light reflecting, which might translate to greasy, dewy mess. It is none of those things. 
I was nervous when I saw light reflecting. Anytime something is described as dewy, glowy, I start to sweat a little bit because I still have an oily T-zone and I live in an incredibly hot and humid climate in South Florida. So foundations like that, while they look really beautiful in the air conditioning when I first apply them, they tend to melt off of my face throughout the day. That is not the case here at all. It does give a little light reflection, but I would say it has more of a natural matte finish and the coverage is beautiful. Just like the Hourglass, it's very perfecting, but it doesn't look or feel heavy on the skin. And my third and final foundation favorite from the year is the new Makeup Forever HD Skin. I remember really loving the original, but then I stopped using it. I have too many foundations as it is. I kind of forgot about it until this launched and there were so many questions. I was not planning to pick this up. I had so many people reach out, ask me if I was planning to review. And at the time I was thinking, no, not really. But then I ended up picking this up during the Sephora Spring Savings event and I am so happy I did because I really like this foundation. I would say coverage wise, this is the lightest of the three favorites that I'm talking about today and it looks probably the most skin-like. I don't like to build this up or stipple. I think this is a perfect everyday weight foundation. It's supposed to blur and last up to 24 hours. I never wear my foundation that long, so I have no idea if it lasts the full 24. But I would say the finish is really perfect as well. It's great for all skin types, whether you're oily, normal, even if you're dry, I think you can make this work for your skin. It has a just natural, skin-like finish. It's not really extreme one way or another. So actually some people might really hate that. If you have extremely oily skin to the point where you need a mattifying foundation or extremely dry skin to the point where you need something really oily and hydrating, this wouldn't be for you. But if you love a middle of the road, not too much in any direction, kind of the Goldilocks of foundations, this is worth trying. It's really beautiful. If you can believe it, I have four concealer favorites from 2022 to talk about. I can't believe it because prior to this year, my holy grail list of concealers was maybe three tops. Three concealers that I've ever tried that I would keep in the top drawer and constantly use. I have concealers that I like in the bottom drawer. I don't use them because they're okay. They're so-so. But then this year, I don't know what happened. Everybody... I guess got their hands on the winning formula because all four of these are amazing and they're different. They're not exactly the same either. The concealer that I'm wearing today is the new Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer and I have the shade 4.5 Fair. This has become one of my all-time favorite concealers. It's incredible. I keep it in the top drawer. I use it constantly. It's not overly full coverage. I think it has the perfect amount of coverage so that it does cover if you have any dark spots or anything that you truly need to conceal, but then it does increase. It has the perfect finish. It's not really dewy and hydrating to the point where it's just going to crease nonstop on you and it's not drying. Everything just looks incredibly smooth. I would compare this to the Tom Ford concealer. That's $90. I think it's 90. I don't want to say it's a dupe because I think that term is overused especially when comparing beauty products but they look the same they feel the same both contain a little skincare ingredients except this one is a fraction of the cost i think you get the same result a very similar formula coverage and finish wise is this dior backstage which i heard so many rave reviews about this it took me a while to try it in fact i'm not convinced this launched this year i think it did earlier in the year but i didn't try this until the holiday savings event because i had spent the entire year hearing about how this was everybody's new holy grail concealer of course with concealer personal preference. I've heard people say they didn't like it as well, but when I was on the Sephora squad trip and during spring, almost every single person I asked, what's your favorite concealer? They said Dior Backstage. And I knew at that moment I had to try it. The wand is very interesting. It has this little flat brush, so you can be really precise with the application. I don't really use concealer to carve out my brows anymore, but if you still like to carve out your brow with concealer, this would be perfect for getting any little nook and cranny around the nose, around the eyes. This brush is so nice, but the formula, the texture is amazing. 
it feels a little bit thinner than the Charlotte Tilbury, which is a little bit more of a moussey cream. The next two concealers are pretty different. This new Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer is very full coverage. I would put this up there with the Pat McGrath Labs. Might even be more full coverage than the Pat McGrath, which is really saying something. So if you like that very bright Kim Kardashian circa 2016 under eye, this is incredible. It's truly like face paint, so you can cover anything and everything. If you have some sort of spot on the face that you need to truly conceal, I would pick this up in your skin tone and it will be amazing for spots on the face. But for brightening the under eye area, it's amazing. If you use my setting spray trick, it will help to blend the product and add a little bit more hydration to the finish. For full glam, holiday parties, date nights, if you're doing glitter and you just want the full beats, this is the perfect go-to concealer. And then on the flip side, if you want something that's more natural, I really like the new Too Faced. This is the Born This Way Ethereal Light Concealer. So it has a lot of yummy skincare ingredients and it goes on a little bit lighter coverage wise, but I think it looks really beautiful. On days that I'm doing more of a no makeup makeup, running out the door, maybe I'm going in with the Chanel Water Fresh Complexion Touch, this is the perfect concealer to complement because it doesn't look heavy. When I just dab a little bit of this on bare skin, I can blend it out and it still looks like skin. Doesn't look like I have concealer sitting on top of my face and then no other makeup. It maintains a little bit of light reflection, which I think is really beautiful. So this would be great for anybody with drier under eyes. If you're doing more minimal makeup, this would be great. If you need full coverage, if you have really, really dark circles underneath your eyes, I would probably go with the other three over this one. Moving on to face palettes now, this is one of my favorite holiday launches from Hourglass. It's their new Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked palette. I believe the shade is Lustrous. Now I customized my palette, so I went with the turquoise and the tiger artwork, but this is the shade 2 palette on the inside which I believe is usually the elephant. I love this color combination. I thought it was really cool that they let you customize on the Hourglass website. These shades are why I love this palette so much. And I also think of all of the products that I purchased this year, I think I've gotten the most use out of this one. It's so easy to travel with because you can use this on the eyes. The highlighter is a little bit too deep for my cheeks, but I'll use that on the lid, a little bronzer in the crease, done for the eyes. All of these powders work for the face. It is the most practical, user-friendly palette and all of these shades are flattering. Of all of the palettes I've collected over the past few years, this one is hands down my favorite. And I really like both of these blushes. This one has a little luminosity. This one is a little bit more matte, slightly deeper, but very pretty, fresh, happy pink shades in there. So I love to use both of those. The bronzer is the perfect shade of bronze. It has warmth to it. Is it an absolute must have purchase for the year? That's gonna depend on your preference and your makeup collection. If you already have a ton of these hourglass palettes, maybe you have a lot of face palettes and you don't really grab for them, it's not going to be for everybody. But if you love this style of product, this all in one kind of throw in your bag and hit the road, I think you will love it. I've also loved these palettes from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette. I picked up both. I have the light to medium and the medium to deep. I think both are equally beautiful. I've gotten just as much use out of both of them. I know the price is a little bit steep, but especially now so many different stores are having deals. You might be able to find these on sale, in which case I say you have to go for it because it's truly one of the most beautiful pieces of the year. I love the pink opalescent packaging. They feel really high quality and substantial, but the colors inside are just flattering. I'm wearing this pink highlighter on my cheeks today. I love both of these blushes. This highlighter is great on the eyes. You can use this face, eyes, anywhere you want. So very convenient for travel. And then over here, this deeper blush looks very intimidating, but it goes on a little bit more sheer. So as long as I'm light-handed, I can definitely still use this. I love this peachy blush. This top highlighter is still gorgeous. I can't really decide which one is my favorite. 
Here's another launch that a lot of people criticized that I loved and would consider a best of 2022, the Gucci Blushes. I picked up the shade 03 Radiant Pink. I believe I picked this up during one of the savings events as well. So I did pick it up on sale. And I think that's just a smart way to shop in general. You should never feel so anxious about any makeup launch that you have to purchase it right away or else. If you have to purchase the day it launches or you're never going to get your hands on it, then skip it. it. Nothing is worth a headache or stressing over and you don't have to pay full price for I think any of these items. Most of this stuff is available at Sephora. You know they have at least two sales a year when you can get 10, 15, or 20% off, but especially around the holidays, a lot of department stores, I think Saks is having 15% off beauty right now. You never have to pay the full price is what I'm trying to say. It is expensive, but it's Gucci. It's going to be expensive. I love this packaging. I think it's gorgeous. Just like the powders and the bronzers, it's so pretty. I love the kind of fleshy pink. The gold stars looks really beautiful. The texture. The formula is so silky smooth. Almost feels creamy and bouncy to the touch. This shade is so flattering. It's a nice happy springtime pink. I keep this in the top drawer and I've been using this almost every single day. This has become my go-to blush. I have a lot of Charlotte Tilbury here and not a lot of Dior. I didn't purchase very much Dior or Shantikai this year. Those are two brands that are usually always on my radar, but because of the no buy, I think there weren't that many standout must have products that I ended up skipping most of their launches. But this cream bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury, this was another holiday savings event purchase. Love it. I'm wearing this today. I think their cream bronzer is so much better than the powder bronzer and it's going to take me forever to finish this because you really only need a small amount. I picked up the shade medium and it is the perfect shade of medium. It's not too cool. It's not too warm. It just looks very naturally bronze and I also really like the finish. It's not too matte. It's not too muddy, but it definitely adds color to the skin. Earlier in the year, I also purchased this Westman Atelier Vital Pressed Skincare Powder in the shade Pink Bubble, and I've hit pan. I'm almost done with it. I will definitely finish this soon, and it's a beautiful, compact powder. I love everything about it. It looks gorgeous on the skin. It sets, it mattifies the way I want it to, but it doesn't look dry or crepey, and it really doesn't add coverage. It's just going to set. So it's kind of the perfect pressed version of the Chanel Loose Powder that I love so much. The weighted gold compact feels very luxurious. It does come with a little pouch. I think I threw mine away. The size is really nice. The size for the price is horrifying, but I did pick this up on sale and I would recommend it, but don't pay full price. They did send me a shade complimentary. I don't even think... No, I've, I've opened it and I've looked at it. I think it was maybe shade light, one of the fleshier colors, but I wanted to pick up the pink bubble because I was hoping it would give a lot of brightness beneath the eyes, and it does. It's perfect. If I do need to touch up throughout the day, this is the powder that I go to, which is why I've hit pan and I'm almost done with it. So I get so much use out of this. Another top drawer product. I did kind of have it in my mind that I was not going to let this product go to waste. If I'm purchasing makeup, I need to use it all. This I use as a pressed setting powder, but this next product is a great pressed finishing powder. And there is a difference. The first time I used this, I wasn't sure how I felt about it because I used it as a setting powder to set my concealer and then I dusted it all over my T-zone. And I kept feeling like my makeup didn't really look set. I needed to go back and add more and add more and add more. And it wasn't until I saw a TikTok video recently where a makeup artist was discussing this powder and powders like this, where she talked about the ingredients. I don't think I said the name yet. This is the new Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Brightening Flawless Finish Complexion Perfecting Eye and Face Micro Powder. Now this is stark white. It doesn't look white on the skin, but this is going to be your final, final step. It kind of sets everything in place and it blurs the skin. It's not really going to set, it more blurs. It gives you that soft focus, filtered skin type of look. 
because it has silica in it, and I'm not sure if it's silica or silica balls, there's some sort of main ingredient that just, it's designed to sit directly on top of the skin to blur. It's not really meant to melt into the foundation. It's just meant to sit on top. So this should be like your final dusting and then it will give you a little brightening, a little glow, a little blurring effect. If you use this to set your products, you may not look as matte as you want. You may find that you're looking really shiny, really luminous, and you keep adding more and going back and adding more and more and more product. It's not the way it's designed to be used. One of my makeup goals for the year was to not acquire so many lipsticks because I rarely go through them, but I do have a couple favorites here. This is not a new lipstick formula, but it's a new shade. It's what I'm wearing today. This is the Armani Beauty Lip Power one of my favorite bullet lipsticks and it's the shade 110. I think 109 and 110 were launched recently. It's so pretty. It's bold, but it's not really red. It's kind of a brick deep nudey red, brownie red. I'm not sure what color you would call this, but I like that it's kind of bold, but not a bold red lip. It's different. They are so pigmented, so long lasting. They're really creamy and hydrating on the lips. And I've been wearing this for hours now with no lip gloss on top, which is really saying something. Of course, now I am going to add a lip gloss because I can't help myself. Another one of my favorite lip products has been this Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. I picked up another shade, I loved it so much. This is White Peach. It's the first one I bought and it went viral on TikTok. I started hearing people talk about it I picked this up really late, but I instantly fell in love. It's like a lip gloss and a stick, and it has that plumping, minty sensation, which I really like. But this color looks beautiful on top of anything and everything. My last lipstick favorite is really the lipstick case from the Dior Millefiori collection. I picked up the shade, does it say? Oh, that's only the case. This is shade 667 Dior Mania. It's a beautiful berry. So I love the Dior Addict lipsticks, but these refillable cases are so beautiful. I loved everything from their Miss Dior Milli Fiori collection. All of the bath products. The compact looks beautiful, but it's probably going to go on the worst beauty 2022 list because it's chunky glitter. But this lipstick case is stunning. And finally, I have three favorite eyeshadow palettes of the year. I'm hoping this launched in 2022. I'm pretty sure, but this was sent to me complimentary, so I don't remember. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dreams Luxury Palette. This one has been in the top drawer ever since. I'm wearing this on my eyes today. It's become my go-to eyeshadow palette. And if I am going to finish any eyeshadow palette from my collection, I imagine it's going to be this one because these are the shades that I was using the most out of my larger Pillow Talk palette. I hit pan on those, so now I'm kind of, you know, dipping into the other shades that I don't really like as much. These are the shades that I loved from that palette. It's so user-friendly. It's so versatile. This palette, it's sleek. It's small. It's thin. Doesn't take up a ton of drawer space. It's kind of the ideal palette, honestly. I go in with this in the crease. It's pretty dark, so you can be really light-handed. You can build it up if you want a little depth. You have a beautiful matte shade for the outer V, and then you have two shades for the lid. This pink is a little sparkly, not too sparkly, but I basically just use these three, and it's the perfect, ideal, neutral look. The Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes eyeshadow palette. This is one of my favorites as well, and I know some people don't like it because of the pigmentation, the fallout, She's dusty, but it is what it is. I almost always use my do my eyes first whenever I'm creating a sparkly or deep eyeshadow look anyhow. So not a huge deal. I think you can easily work around that. I love these colors. I like that it leans a little bit more neutral to cool. Polar opposite to Charlotte Tilbury, which leans very warm. Reminds me a lot of the Natasha Denona Glam palette. Now, if I had to choose between the two, 
I'm going Glam Palette every single time. If I was going to pick out one Makeup by Mario palette, it would be Ethereal Eyes. I would skip the Master Mattes and the Master Metallics and I would just go for this. If you love jewel tones, sparkles, drama with your eyeshadow, then Pat McGrath Labs is the brand to go to. And this was her one and only Mothership launch of the year. It's the Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction Palette. And this has become my favorite Pat McGrath Labs palette because I think it is the most wearable. I think these tones are so flattering. You have plenty of mattes, metallics, you have the sparkle, duo chrome shades, everything you want from a Pat McGrath Labs palette, but then make it wearable. If possible, it, this is kind of that perfect middle of the road, not too difficult to use, still user friendly. There aren't any shades in this palette that I just know I will never touch. Whereas some of the other palettes, even in my collection, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty to swatch it, but I'm not putting that on my eyes and leaving the house. You know, it's just a little bit too crazy for me. It's not my personal style. I don't feel that way about any of these shades. In fact, I've worn all of these out of the house and I think they're beautiful. Of course, I will also be sharing a best and worst fragrance launches of 2022. I wasn't sure where this would fit in, but I do have one more somewhat miscellaneous product. It's the Beja Flor Elasti Cream from Sol de Janeiro. I love Sol de Janeiro. I use the Boom Boom Cream almost every day, but since this launched, I've been using this one and I just think the smell is intoxicating. It smells so beautiful on the skin. It's such a pretty floral. And it layers so nicely beneath a lot of my favorite fragrances. The scent of these creams from Sol de Janeiro, they're so intense and I always receive compliments. So if you are somebody who complains about your fragrance not really lasting, make sure you layer a really good body cream. It needs to be hydrating so that your skin doesn't absorb all of the essential oils from the fragrance. But if it has a light scent that will enhance and boost the scent of the fragrance, that's even better. And that completes my list of beauty favorites from 2022. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked seeing some of your favorite products listed. If there's anything that I missed that you loved that launched in 2022, definitely comment down below. I cannot wait to read through some of your favorites. If you have any least favorites, throw those in the bunch as well. I always think those are really interesting. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.